Welcome to the Fantasy Football Forge. I'm Steve, and today we will be practicing some mock drafts, talking some strategy along the way, talking some opinions on players, some opinions on why I might um, take a player here rather than somebody who I have ranked higher than them. Those types of things, just kind of play testing, essentially. Mocking from the four through six positions. Last video I did, I think, about two drafts for each, and I did a, a similar thing as I'm about to do in this video, which is just showing you a draft that I did before starting recording. I'm actually using my personal rankings on uh, for that draft, which have been updated quite a bit recently due to um, just reacting to everything that has happened over the past uh, week or so since the first time I got my rankings up. Those can be found up on the website at www theffforge.com. There should be a link down in the description to that. I'm not being paid for this by Fantasy Pros or anything like that, um, but I will be using their Draft Wizard. I like it for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of um, reasons not to like it too for some, but it works for me for this purpose. Let's just go through the settings of what uh, today's draft will look like. We will be doing, obviously, just a regular redraft, which is what everybody is um, mostly doing this time of the season. Going off of half PPR settings, uh, I'm, not only am I the most familiar with the half PPR format, just from experience of playing in it the most, but I also like it the most for just giving general opinions out there into the world as far as the fact that it is you know, the closest to PPR and non-PPR snake-type draft, 12-team league drafting from the fourth position right now, and we will switch that as we go through some of these drafts. And I will be working through a one quarterback, a two running back, two wide receiver, single tight end here, and a flex spot, wide receiver, running back, or tight end. Seven bench spots. Um, I know six is popular too, but that's the preset on Fantasy Pros, so I just trust that they've done their market research. And then kickers and DSTs. Along with that, I will have all of these... Um, chosen for their ADPs uh, for the different platforms because that gives us the most mix to potentially uh, re recreate or create what we may see on draft day in our own leagues. Chose all normal for these settings so that's one thing that I like about the draft wizard myself is I am in a league that a lot of guys don't necessarily know rookies a whole lot and quarterbacks usually tend to go quick although I will say if you are in a home league um, this year in a quarterback happy league, it, it, they were drafted like pretty normally how you would kind of expect them to be drafted in this draft this year. And if anything, the backup quarterbacks, a lot of people have backup quarterbacks in my league all went in like the final two or three rounds of the draft. So, um, just a heads up, if you're in that kind of home league, maybe some, older folks or you are one of the older folks at the table but you do your homework whatever the case I don't care that was my experience for this draft there I think there was just a lot of names that people are familiar enough with and familiar enough with the situations this year some exciting situations that there was just no hurry to take the next quarterback off of the board after everybody had their starting quarterbacks and I will be mostly drafting from the uh, latest fantasy pros uh, kind of, kind of, what word am I trying to think of? ECR, whatever. Um, consensus ratings, because I think that gives us, once again, the best ability for me to speak on a general level compared to, like, my rankings are a little more specific. Here is a draft I did ahead of time. Let's try to zoom through this. Justin Jefferson fouled to me, however you want to look at it, at the fourth pick. Obviously going to take him. I actually, in my rankings, I value that number one wide receiver just a little bit more than the top three or so running backs. So, love that. Aaron Jones, I think, fell to me at the 2.9. And I had him, I was kind of planning on going to wide receiver in this. I also, I will tell you, I was planning on fading quarterback and tight end. And at certain points, it became really hard not to take them. So, um, just... To bring that up, if you're fading, it's an easy year to fade quarterback or tight end and get some pretty solid dudes pretty late in the draft. Even here, um, fading tight end, Dawson Knox at the 13th round. I mean, is he really going to be a whole lot different than uh, David Njoku in the 11th round? And then even look at this, if you like TJ back in the 11th round, 
yeah, no, no rush to be getting them. I, I would say that also I don't mind getting one of the top. I have it as two tight ends, but top three, I would say tight ends, um, I think are worth getting at the top just based on how this draft tends to fall. Not a bad idea. So uh, I had planned on going wide receiver. Aaron Jones fell there, have him in a different tier. So went with the tiers on that one and just the upside of what is possible for Aaron Jones this year is uh, very good. He might have a lot of receptions. It's very possible. Came back around to Keenan Allen. Once again, a kind of a tier situation more than anything. And uh, coming around in the fourth round, took J.K. Dobbins over. I kind of wanted one of the wide receivers at that point, but once again, it didn't really make sense. I will say about J.K., he is basically, like, it doesn't feel like you're getting a good value on him. It feels like you might be getting a bad value on him. But also, if he's anything like he was his rookie year this year, and he might not be. He's coming back from an injury. That's the, that's the really the only scary part for me. But if this Baltimore team is anything like they were two years ago, if J.K. Dobbins is, let's say he's three-quarters of the man he was physically for most of the year as he was in his uh, rookie season for the second half of his rookie season, if he's three-quarters of that physically and he's uh, way further ahead mentally, he might be able to give some sort of similar production anyways. Historically, this Baltimore's coaching staff, this team, has been pretty good, and Lamar Jackson... Uh, creates enough of a diversion on the ground that just stuffing the run against that Baltimore system is tough when they are running like they want to run. So not like last season. Followed that up with A.J. Dillon. Went back a little bit uh, in my rankings to grab him over a few guys. Now I'm feeling like I have an ultimate floor team with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, though, sitting there in my running back spot, three running backs. I kind of leaned into that with my next pick. Once again, went back a few guys compared to my rankings, but I wasn't too confident, at least, that Hunter would still be here in two picks, and I was looking for wide receiver and possibly going to take a running back as well. I wasn't too sure, so went with Hunter. Like I said, leaning into this floor idea for this team where, uh, especially from Justin Jefferson, I have some oomph, should have oomph between these two in any given week and or JK. Hunter should have a lot of opportunity and should be even more efficient than he has been in the past. So I think uh, there's a lot of upside to Hunter this year that might be getting a little bit overlooked. So I follow that up with Christian Kirk. Basic idea here at this point, I knew I was probably only going to be taking two more wide receivers. Kind of knew it would probably, I was hopeful it would be Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Christian Kirk at that point. And really just wanted to add some some upside, some spark guys into the lineup at that point. And thinking that I was only going to take two more wide receivers, I jumped ahead and took Ramondre here to help shore up those running backs. So feeling solid there. Another probably more of a floor guy than a ceiling guy in Ramondre. But, I mean, just like, I guess, a lot of running backs. One injury away from potentially being a stud for, you know, however many weeks. Follow that up with Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Uh, he is someone that, if you aren't familiar with um, my thoughts on Marquez, I th- I think there's a lot of potential upside. Basically, I think there's a decent chance he is a, let's say, a Tyreek Hill light, um, maybe quite light compared to some seasons of Tyreek Hills as of late, but uh, a guy who may be somewhat inconsistent on a week-in and week-out basis, but also may have three weeks with two touchdowns, several weeks with over 100 yards. Combine that with those weeks of two touchdowns and the season with 12 touchdowns. He has... Then, you know, potentially, I mean, he has the most exciting offense, we'll say it like that, at least over recent years. And there's no real reason to not expect Patrick Mahomes to take advantage of the new weapons that he has. So um, I think there's a lot of upside for Marquez. Do you think Juju may prevent him from being consistent? That would be my only issue, but he's somebody that. Uh, I can now toss into this lineup maybe on a week where I'm facing somebody who um, has a really good team. I'm kind of expecting to lose. I have to play Aaron and A.J. Dillon, let's say, so my ceiling's capped, like, real hardcore. 
I'm like, okay, well, I'll throw Marquez Valdez Scantling in this week. Hope he has one of those big blow up games that can push me over the hill to win in this matchup. I'm not someone who just simply says, well, I think so and so is going to score more points this week, so you should play them. Uh, situations can dictate my lineup to a certain extent. And, uh, you know, you can screw yourself by trying to play a situation. But uh, sometimes you just know that the odds are stacked against you, and just because you think one guy's going to score fewer points probably than somebody else doesn't mean they don't also have a higher ceiling than that somebody else. Um, And being on Kansas City's offense is a ceiling. Being a speedster that can really get up the field quickly with Patrick Mahomes throwing to him, well, we know what that can look like. So, upside. Um, follow that up with, I didn't know who the heck to draft at this point. There was, uh, we're down to like running backs that aren't going to get drafted and definitely not in the, uh, quantities that was concerning to me for targets. Like I said, was pushing off quarterback and, um, tight end. It's possible that Goddard was even still available here. uh, And I, I would take him also of note here. The Bills are not my number one D. I more so just went with the consensus there to show people who might agree with consensus over my rankings. Like, okay, here's the D that you would be essentially reaching for at this point if you went with this kind of draft. Or maybe you like a different defense, but you probably wouldn't have to reach for, um, other than like Tampa and the Bills, I think at this point in the draft, uh, there's zero concern of anybody else going. So it depends who you like there too, which can also be something to think about if you want to push off quarterback and tight end. If your defense is not a popular uh, high-end defense, if your league doesn't draft DSTs early, just keep that in mind. Maybe you'll just want to attack at the quarterback or the tight end around this point of draft, and maybe you could get somebody infinitely better in the 8th, ninth round instead so just keep that in mind if you're doing a little bit of last minute homework trying to figure things out pay attention to maybe um what kind of quarterbacks tight ends would be taking getting taken off of the board at this point in the draft follow that up with a couple of running backs tyler algier didn't need somebody you know i i, I got some good guys right off of the bat i know i can fill up my flex with any of the receivers i believe so i'm not too worried about uh hopefully early season and I should only ever have one running back to, except for one week of the season, there should only be one running back spot that's really at risk of uh, being totally lost on me anyways. So um, took a guy who we don't know yet what, what it's going to look like. I do have him projected as like the prototypical running back on that team with Cordero Patterson moving around a little bit more and being the third down back. Saw so Raheem Mostert play in the preseason game the other night. Um, he only had like two carries, but we got to see him out there and he, he looks good. He looks like Raheem Mostert as far as I can tell. Um, you know, I don't know if he lost a little bit of juice or not, whatever the case. I projected him to come out of that backfield, uh, back in March as the lead back and then had to go back on that as of late, but all signs are pointing up whatever up is for Raheem Mostert at this point in time. So just an upside kind of pick. Went over a few guys who I had ranked higher, but I I did just move him back up in my ranks a little bit. uh, A little bit. He looks like a guy who you're going to at least want to get six touches a game. And for Raheem Mostert, six touches can be a touchdown easily. And, you know, on a 40-yard play. So like him, that's a minimum amount of touches. Follow that up with Dawson Knox. Um, Tua took him. Was hoping to be able to get him and Trevor Lawrence or um, was thinking of taking a second tight end maybe. And so this is where I knew um, probably right around this point that I would be taking a kicker early and just um, taking my second quarterback or tight end with the last pick. So took a higher end kicker because why not? And Josh Palmer, I took as a, kind of a... a um, handcuff to my Keenan Allen I'm hoping to never have to put more than two running backs out there unless you know we get some some um, awesomeness from some of them and wide receivers don't work out but 
ultimately the plan well with this team is that I should be able to have three wide receivers out there most of the time um, and just kind of wanted to protect that a little bit and Josh Palmer's uh, might have some standalone value I think there there was higher upside guys still available and some still on the waiver wires at this point so um, just took him as an in case kind of guy and you know him Raheem Mostert, heck, Tyler Algier, all easy to get rid of if not looking good early in the season and somebody else pops up. So uh, that is that roster. Let's get to drafting. Well, we just did a wide receiver first. So Austin Eckler's probably the uh, a lot of people's third, fourth running back there. I would suggest going wide receiver. Why don't we see what happens when we go running back strong? Now, I like Leonard plenty, but is Javante really in a heck of a lot of a different situation? I don't know. I think he has more upside. So let's just do that. Um, I do have Javante ranked lower than Leonard Fournette. I'm a Leonard Fournette fan, but... Um, I just don't quite see the total upside for him, and there are some concerns with the team and some concerns of his usage being taken away. So I don't know that he's... I don't obviously don't think he is a slam dunk higher pick than somebody like Javante. Let's see how this looks if we go with the tight end. I don't recommend... I don't think it's worth taking Kyle Pitts there, but um, it's not the worst decision in the world. Who do we like better? What do we lose out on running backs? I think it did a really strong running back. Let's just kind of go with... It's still looking pretty good the other night out there. Well, tier-wise, that worked out nicely. So um, one thing as we're coming down the final stretch here and with um, like a Brian Robinson going down, combined with other factors of Damian Pierce's rising uh, a lot for me, for my rankings, a lot of the guys who might have been a sleeper-ish type quality guys are, are creeping up to a point where I, I can't get them all anymore, something late. So I am um, starting to want to get a, at least a couple of running backs um, I'll say at least one prior to whatever this tier five that they have on here. And um, if you were to only get one before that, then I would want like two here and two here, something like that. So we can see there was just a run on the quarterback. So this is the point in the draft where it really doesn't make sense to go quarterback strong unless uh, Jalen Hurts is probably the only one. And that looks to be kind of the case over here. That is left that um, if you want to target, he would be the guy that will go out of all those. And I don't, I don't have Darnell Moody ranked this high, but um, or at least I never see him when I use my rankings around this spot of the draft. So I, I look at this roster and I, I don't hate it at all. I like it. Feels pretty balanced. I personally don't love the wide receivers that I have here. So it's a time to get some other guys. Um, and I'm fine with Rashad Bateman over Michael Thomas. I have Michael Thomas ranked higher purely for the upside. But to be honest, with this roster specifically, um, I don't mind just being a little bit safer with that pick. Rashad Bateman should have a floor amount of work being the number one wide receiver there. And I, I still like Christian Kirk more than Devontae Smith, more than Drake London. And I think they all have equal upside. And I think the least risky of them would be Christian Kirk. So that's my thoughts there. Tight end, Dallas Goddard should be pushed. This is about the time where you start thinking about it. Don't need to yet. Don't need to worry about wide receiver quite uh, quarterback yet. And running backs, um, don't think I want both. If Javante's really good, the Melvin Gordon's going to be a 
barely a flex guy with a, a, a floor, but probably not a floor you want. And yeah, we're pretty solid with our running back, so we'll just hold off on that. Well, Isaiah Spiller would be someone to maybe keep in mind. And Christian Kirk. So this is a point in the draft where um, it feels like you need to attack this tight end. It feels like he's got to go, right? Usually doesn't. Um, these guys will probably get gobbled up along with these guys right now. When it comes down to it, generally, running backs are a little bit more valuable than wide receivers. So that's why we're going running back there. Especially from this spot in the draft, you best be keeping track of, at the very least, the quarterbacks and the tight ends that this team is taking during the draft. Just write quarterback, tight end, on a little sheet of paper during the draft, and each time just do a tick, and then you'll know how many were taken at least between this group. So um, a tight end in the next two picks for this guy, I would say is um, fairly likely, probably. Probably a running back tight end. So we will attack. Yeah, it says 64% over here chance. So we grab that. There is still some upside. So between Michael Gallup, Rondale Moore, Jarvis Landry, I do not like Rondale Moore, and I'm not even going to just take him here because he's... Um, you know, I'm taking some guys just because that's where the general consensus is on them, but um, I would not in this instance. But it feels like there is a tier fall off there compared to what's available here that I find more valuable. So wh when Michael Gallup comes back and healthy, if he's back to a normal self, how much better is he than Jarvis Landry? Probably not a heck of a lot better. In Jarvis Landry's case, if... Camaro goes down or is suspended like it's still possible. How good is he? He's probably a 10 target, a minimum kind of guy. Um, so don't see a lot of uh, huge difference in their floors. And I like the ceiling and the Cowboys just seem to be cursed. It just not a good start to their season. Now we're thinking run a quarterback is about to be taken. Sure enough, man, homeboy. There it is. We'll do it. Um, probably one of the best premier backup running backs to have. We'll just grab that without even looking. So finished it up with uh, Zamir White, San Francisco 49ers, and a kicker. Do not intend to uh, take two tight ends. Totally forgot I had taken Kyle Pitts. Great backup tight end. I don't like taking two tight ends. Don't recommend it. But if you were to take two tight ends or like to... Look at that's look at that team. You can still build around it. We got Aaron Rodgers, Austin Eckler, Javante Williams. Other running backs include A.J. Dillon, Ramondre Stevens, and then uh, Khalil White, Khalil Herbert, Zamir White as our backups, our hopefuls. If some, yeah, no, I shouldn't say hopeful. We don't want any injuries, but um, in case. Running back goes down. Two guys who definitely have some good upside to them. And for our wide receivers, we're seeing Deontay Johnson, Darnell Mooney, Christian Kirk, who I think is being wholly underdrafted, uh, underrated, ranked. Rashad Bateman, Jarvis Landry. I like the depth of this wide receiver core more than I like the starters. Other than that, we got I mean, still got a good DST, good kicker. Um, you know, DSTs and kickers... If your league's anything like my home league, they're not exactly taken this uniformly at the end of the draft, but uh, you can still attack them at some point and not lose a lot, th you know, in, after round 12-ish. It felt to me like I got a good amount of mileage out of that first draft, um, the draft that I did before this, so I am... Just going to move on to the fifth position. I might just do one from this spot. We'll see how interesting it is. And let's try drafting a quarterback and a tight end being smashed in here in the middle early in this one for the most part. <clears throat> At least that's the plan going in. From the fifth spot, Cooper Cup, Jonathan Taylor, McCaffrey, Eckler. Uh, 
to me, this is a toss up between Derrick Henry, Cooper Cup. Now, I went Justin, I've gone both routes. I think most people would probably take Cooper Cup over Derrick Henry. So we'll just do that. Devontae Willen's taken. So we'll go wide receiver strong with our first two picks. Um, CD's got a lot of upside to him. So even if uh, Dallas really struggles, CD should be the guy um, soaking up a lot of that work. I have Ezekiel Elliott quite far down in my rankings at this point. So we could go for the number one uh, quarterback there. Tight end probably is down to, it would be Kyle Pitts again. We did that last draft. Let's see what it looks like. I don't quite think it's necessary or worth it. But honestly, looking at these running backs, I don't mind him over them. Or the wide receivers a whole lot. So the draft board is looking as you would expect. Uh, three quarterbacks and the three tight ends off the board here by middle late of the fourth round. That is pretty standard. Here's the main reason I don't like. If you really want to go high upside quarterback out of the top three, I mean, either get your Justin Herbert here or... Lamar Jackson's usually still here, even probably we'll see if he's still available for my next pick. I don't have him this highly ranked, but I understand where it's coming from 100%. So, Cortland, and we are going 0 RB, folks. Ish. So I, I did move Antonio Gibson right up to, I think, where I had Brian Robinson. Um, I took Brian Robinson in my draft. I moved him up quite a ways just a few hours before my draft, and I hope he gets better soon. Sounds like as far as taking two bullets goes is best case scenario for him, so that's good news for his health and his future. I mean, yeah. Um, do still like the upside. Who did I take him over there? I don't, I don't really like Chase Edmonds. Like, I like Antonio Gibson's upside now more than Chase Edmonds in season long. Maybe they're on a similar scale if, best case scenario, what, like five, six weeks or so, uh, Brian Robinson comes back. This is about the time where you can expect to see Damian Pierce go. So if you're a Damian Pierce fan, and I am, feel free to take him. Look at those running backs. I guess not quarterbacks, tight ends. Okay. Well, if you don't, I mean, I don't even love Cortland Sutton, but you don't love this wide receiver core. Uh, love Tony Pollard's upside. Something that I thought back in March, um, Tony Pollard might get a lot of receptions in this team, whether it is by luck because of injuries. that uh, It's potentially coming true. Um, it is potentially coming true. So if you like Zach Ertz, now would be the time to grab him probably. If there's any time that I'm going to need Cordero Patterson, this is probably the type of team that I'd love to have him on early portion of the season. Should probably be at his... Um, most usefulness as they might still be getting Tyler Algier up to speed to things for the team. Um, you know, there's nothing to suggest Tyler has really supplanted Cordero's role, except for the fact that he was drafted really. And that, that having a traditional running back in that, and that system and for that team would be very helpful. And the fact that Cordero did burn out as the season went along last season, so they can, um, get him you know keep him just a little bit fresher for the entirety of the season that would definitely be also helpful beneficial to the team and him probably want one more running back um so a lot of people i'm i'm looking like i i would take naheem hines if there wasn't a guy like jamal williams here essentially i i took raheem moster last time so we know what i thought about him um he would also be a target here i like those names the most so um like Jamal for this roster gives me a nice another floor guy that I can put in there week one if need be if Damian Pierce 
isn't actually the starter there. And, and also the type of team where Michael Gallup seems to make sense for me. Now Dawson Knox just got taken. I'm going to go late, late tight end. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a moment here um, to talk on some players. So Nico Collins probably won't be consistent enough to be uh, a surprise guy, but could definitely be worth, um, if you get him out there in the right weeks, uh, you know, get a little bit lucky when you use him on his bye weeks or via matchup, whatever the case. Um, I'm sure he'll have at least five useful weeks this season. So um, a good guy to have. And then obviously a lot of hype for K.J. Osborne in that offense. Um, yeah, the, it's a new offense. Uh, so there might be room for a third receiver. You know, Historically, the Vikings' previous offensive scheme just didn't really favor the third wide receiver in Minnesota at all. Um, talked about Robbie Anderson in the past. Marvin Jones is a guy I probably have ranked maybe a little bit higher, but or right around here. It's just not exciting anymore. It never was exciting for Marvin Jones. But uh, if you just need someone to, I don't know. I don't know what situation, what kind of team you draft Marvin Jones on, other than you are just a fan of him, because uh, he could definitely have a fine year. Just probably won't have big enough games to help you win weeks, but it should help you not lose weeks. Wanda Robinson looks like they might be cutting, trading away Darius Slay. So that helps to open up any question of um, maybe Kadarius, Tony, and Wandale both getting on the field or something like that. I think that opens things up a little bit more to be a little bit more clear with the New York Giants receivers. It's just hard to trust that offense. Who is it going to be? I think a lot of them are going to have good weeks. It's just going to be a matter of being able to predict the good weeks. So I don't like the predictability there. KJ Hamler, definitely an interesting upside uh, guy who probably not predictable, but could have a floor in that offense, but I don't, I think they're going to run too much for the third wide receiver in that offense to be viable enough. Donovan Peoples Jones, if Cleveland were to get Jimmy Garoppolo, if Jimmy Garoppolo, Garoppolo were to join Cleveland, which I think they should do it totally. If Cleveland doesn't, they should spend any amount of whatever they need to do to get Jimmy Garoppolo. Otherwise they are just wasting an entire season's worth of getting Deshaun Watson on that team. They've, they have this window that uh, I just don't understand. So we're going to go with that thought. What if? Big upside guy. And it's, uh, I believe, his third year now. Opposite of Amari Cooper. Could open things up for him. Uh, is he really a lot better than anybody else or have the most upside of that group? No, but I wanted to talk about him. <laughs> and we lost out on all of the running backs. I'm going to take Cole Komet. All right, so after um, screwing up and taking that wide receiver too early, I took Cole Komet here. Jameis Winston. Ugh. There's just no running backs I was too interesting in having at that point. Isaiah Pacheco would be somebody who actually would have been a potential add to this roster. Um, eh, probably even a good addition to this roster. Outside of taking Jameis Winston, backup quarterback. Um, I, I He's the last of his own kind in my mind out of who was available. So I did like that, getting... A guy who I think is an every week, um, at least, you know, an every week starter or a top 18 quarterback is what that basically means. Uh, so that's that was good. And then the New Orleans Saints, uh, I think sneaky good defense to keep in mind. I believe really like their opening schedule, um, their early season schedule. It's nice. I was eyeing them up in my draft and then they got taken. And so I ended up going with the Broncos. Somebody I moved up in my defensive rankings. Uh, no, I did not end up moving them up. They're pretty far down, but really like their opening season schedule, and I probably have them too low anyways, so um, it could be an exciting defense. And yeah, i finish it off with a kicker. So we have Josh Allen, 
with a backup quarterback. And then Antonio Gibson, Damian Pierce, Tony Pollard, Cordero Patterson, Jamal Williams. Probably would not have minded having Isaiah Pacheco, but really screwed up there in taking Donovan Peoples-Jones. Uh, but there's, it's possible that you could do that in a draft. It happens sometimes. You just get locked in looking through one position, and all of a sudden you're choosing from that. Heck, it happened in my draft, actually. Cooper Cup, C.D. Lamb, Cortland Sutton, Gabriel Davis. A lot of upside there. Pretty much going to be playing three wide receivers, hopefully every week for this team, and they should be giving you a good edge. And then got a nice back, um, got a nice hopeful in Cole Komet at tight end. Didn't mind putting him out there alone. Uh, once you get to a certain point in tight ends, they're all the same, and it's not. It doesn't take that long to get to that point. So I, I think Cole Komet has a pretty decent shot of being in that group of 15 tight ends that are usable on a week-in and week-out basis. And so Michael Gallup to come in uh, a few weeks into the season to help it out. I feel like a, a B feels pretty appropriate for this team. Okay, so I actually picked from the fifth spot in my league this year, and um, here's the team I ended up with. Uh, Christian McCaffrey fell to me at the number five spot, so obviously took him. He was my number two pick um, overall for the draft. I named my team the Christian Crusaders because I have Christian McCaffrey, Christian Watson, Christian Kirk, and I am dumb. Like I was speaking about, I got Kyler Murray in the, uh, we'll just call it, I got Kyler Murray in the fifth, and then I got DK in the sixth. Um, DK Metcalf, somebody that I put up in my rankings uh, the morning of Saturday morning, and I, I struggled to get his name out of my mouth, but... Um, like I said, I got just, I was looking at the wide receivers, trying to find out who I would want to take over Kyler Murray. Cause I didn't really want to take a quarterback with my fifth pick. Obviously maybe didn't love the running backs or, well, there's a few things with how my league mates draft two that there tends to be a few running backs that always fall every year that I'm surprised to see later. So trying to just anticipate that a little bit. And, uh, hey, um, so it just feels better if I pretend that I got Kyler there and then DK in the sixth, it's easier to swallow. Uh, I do think that there's, well, there is some upside to uh, DK with, so I moved him up because of the quarterback change. Geno Smith became the quarterback. Um, Friday night after that was announced, I went and I looked at the games last year between G um, the four games where Geno Smith and DK Metcalf played. And three of those four games were very good, like top, five to ten uh, of the week wide receiver type games that's really good odds um don't expect 75 percent of your games for anybody to be in the top you know five to eight ish wide receivers but if we can get 80 percent of that or something that's still going to be worth it at that point in the draft and um you know some i don't know I got DK Metcalf. So the rest of my uh, wide receivers, uh, Michael Pittman, I actually got, I did, I was virtual. Everybody else in my draft is um, back in my hometown. So uh, it was easy to be skipped over as the person that was to my left on the seating chart did not seem to ever remember that there was an iPad sitting there with me in it. And so uh, coming around that third turn, that happened, and uh, like four picks go by before I was like, uh, I think it's my turn. I might have taken a running back there, but um, like I said, I I um, I usually end up regretting having so many running backs early in my drafts, and Michael Pittman was the guy I was um, looking at and comparing to like three running backs. All those three running backs got taken, and then when uh, – our commissioner went to draft Michael Pittman. I was like, I think I got skipped over. <laughs> like, sorry, Commish, but I'm going to take Michael Pittman just to not make things confusing because I did not know exactly where I got cut off anyways. I digress. So I um, drafted DeAndre Hopkins because I didn't love um, <laughs> the DK Metcalf, wanted some pop in my roster in case that doesn't work out coming in some point in the season. Now, I... Uh, 
I forgot that suspended players can't be moved in the IR, so don't forget about that unless uh, your league is different, but uh, something to remember and think about. And then uh, Jarvis Landry, real late in that draft, took Mark Andrews um, because, like I said, I actually I don't mind getting one of those top two, three, and I really just have two tight ends in this draft because of how deep some of the running backs and wide receivers are, as well as how much I... Um, like some of the guys where I can get them. And then I got Christian Kirk, who I absolutely love, and Christian Watson, who could be a total dud. Uh, But I loved him coming into the draft, really wanted the Packers to take him. They took him. He's basically going undrafted, so I was not going to pass him up. Took him a little bit early because I do draft with a probably about mm, 9 to 10 of us are Green Bay's Packers fans. So um, it can be hard to get Packers players usually. Although Aaron Rodgers, I don't think, went real early in that draft this year. Running backs. Are there any up there? So Christian McCaffrey, followed by Brees Hall. I kind of took that because I knew I could get Damian Pierce. Um, Kind of had to reach for Damian too because there are like two people in that league that every year surprise me with some of the names that they like. And uh, it felt like one of the guys that they might have been high on with all the publicity he's been getting lately. So I think I took him in like the sixth. And followed that up with Kenneth Walker and Brian Robinson. And so I don't have a guaranteed starter number two running back at this point. Um, but also have like all the potential in the world. I do expect Damian Pierce... A uh, little bit of the coach came out today. Uh, what's his name from Chicago? Um, Lovey Smith came out today and said that um, he hasn't. They haven't decided who's the RB one. It's that's noise in that news or noise segment that uh, some sports dudes do. That would be considered noise. I, don't know. I mean, there, there's always a chance. Uh, it's news and Damian Pierce isn't the number one running back until week three or something. And so that was the general risk I took, but I pretty much was about a hundred percent convinced Brian Robinson was going to be the starter. And that is part of the reason that I chose Kenneth Walker because he's the last of this group that I took. Uh, Part of the reason I took him is I saw like the Tyler Algiers, but more so Brian Robinson down there, maybe somebody else. I was like, well, I can get myself some dudes who, if in a pinch, I can play in week one. Uh, maybe even Cordell or Patterson would have been sitting around there, but I think that's like who I took Kenneth Walker over, probably. Daryl Henderson luckily fell quite a bit, and I'm pretty high on him compared to consensus anyways, but he also um, went way after consensus when I took him. And so he was a guy I was able to take that, hey, if I need a second running back in week one, I uh, should be able to get some decent usage from Daryl Henderson week one and maybe even better than decent in week one. Um, we They have a head coach in that league, whatever. Broncos DST, like I said, I took. And then um, like the seventh kicker off the board got Tyler Bass, so take that. Same with the Broncos defense. It was like the 10th or 11th defense off the board. I think it was like 10th. So uh, not bad values for either of those two either. A lot of value. I uh, was surprised put this draft into some of those rate my drafts, and they liked it a lot, um, maybe more than I do. But I, I like, I love a lot of things about this team. But I also very much might have a terrible, terrible season, especially I'm afraid that running back scares me because that is so frustrating. But uh, a lot of upside there. Outside of, um, well, please stay healthy. Please stay healthy. Please stay healthy. So there is what a draft can look like, especially this is a home draft. It's, it's a, I think, a pretty standard mix of home drafters. You know, got the guys drafting the names they've known for the last 10 years randomly. You've got the guys following some draft rankings made back in July. You've got some guys who know some names and then don't know others that, you know, a pretty typical home draft style draft. So was able to find some nice value late. All the more reason that I don't mind taking a Mark Andrews early and getting a Kyler Murray there. It really helped to shore this roster up from any concerns I have with my 
Really, my only concern is that RB2, which shouldn't be a concern for long, but it is for now. But I um, there's also I think I'll get, take Jahan Dotson off of the um, waiver wire. I was planning on putting DeAndre Hopkins into my uh, IR spot because I'm an idiot, and then taking Jahan Dotson, but can't do that. So let's draft from the sixth spot. I mean, if Justin Jefferson's still there, how can I say no? We'll make this a quick draft since I'm going wide receiver early again. So if you're sitting here looking at C.D. Lamb and Aaron Jones, I think a week ago I would have said C.D. Lamb. But like I said, the running backs are starting to get squished up a little bit from some of the ones who used to fall, like the James Cooks even. So we want to get those. Well, that's fine. I think I have Keenan Allen uh, ranked a little bit higher than Adair Brown myself but um kind of want you to see what kind of team that you you know a lot most people don't have Keenan allen ranked higher let's see we've taken Cortland sutton once we've taken jk dobbins yeah it's uh you can get some pretty pretty nice set of wide receivers early there with the running back i like that and follow that up with a solid nothing wrong with josh jacobs i think he's getting hated on a little too much so i like ceh over clyde take damian harris uh it's a little more solid ceh is all the upside in the world but i like that solid new england runs a lot down in the goal line here in the seventh round I like russell wilson trey lance um i like it i think that's a nice time to draft a quarterback and i mean this is freaking awesome so we are feeling a good about our running backs we'll probably want zamir white um the main thing about josh jacobs is concerning could protect that damian pierce is still available so take him and tj hawkinson here i mean I don't have him incredibly well ranked this year, but he is my sixth tight end still. Uh, so I may not think a lot of him, but I think enough of him. And able to get a guy that I absolutely love here late, a lot of upside. So I think we'll take Zamir White here, whatever he in round 12. That's about the time that you need to grab him. Um, we have Houston. I would take Nico Collins, but I really don't like having two Houston players. Isaiah McKenzie feels like a nice guy on this team. That's just a floor guy I can take right at the end. You know what? Russell Wilson is on a team that is going to run a fair amount. So, just in case he's a bit of a boring quarterback and we want to at least be able to play um, the matchups some weeks with Tua... If maybe he's not a stud, but he goes off against bad teams, um, bad defenses, something like that, could definitely be a scenario that's, I would say, probably worst case for Tua this year. So um, probably not bad to pair up with a really good quarterback who might be capped as far as the upside goes, just based on the offense that will be run there. I like that. Does Isaiah McKenzie ever get drafted? He does sometimes. So we get our floor wide receiver to just shore up. We were a little thin here. We we took a gamble, and we took, a, I, I think, a potentially high target uh, guy, a really good floor guy in one of the best offenses in the league. Um... Let's see what... I'm going to take a kicker. And look at that. If you're not in Green Bay, sometimes they might fall a little ways. Really love the Green Bay defense. So there's that roster. We got Russell Wilson and then paired him up with Tua because uh, there was just really... Uh, the wide receivers got pretty zapped as far as upside guys go. And all the Jahan Dotsons and even Jalen Tolbert's. Uh, and the Jahan Dotsons all got taken fairly early. So, um, 
that is something to keep in mind. They are no longer making it towards these back parts of the draft as of Monday, August 29th. I don't remember where I was at. So running backs, Aaron Jones, Josh Jacobs, with Damian Harris, Tony Pollard, Damian Pierce, Zamir White, all backing that up. I like it. Strong. And then Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown. So then we got T.J. Hawkinson in at tight end. Nice value in like the 10th round. Cortland Sutton here in the flex right now. A lot of people love him for the upside. Personally, I like Marquez Valdez-Scantley more. But um, both of them, I actually don't think I have Marquez higher. I don't know. But uh, two great other wide receivers to have. And then Isaiah McKenzie there. As a good floor guy. Yeah, that's the roster. Nice Packers right towards the end. Um, so they're a defense I really am high on. That uh, does not always get taken as a uh, more top defense. This actually works out nicely for the final choice because I think we had this choice before, and I said most people would go Cooper, but um, I have Derrick Henry higher, and we wanted to go running back. Let's go running back strong in this draft. I mean, how can you say no to that start? So, yes, please. I don't even care who was up there. If if you're sitting right here and Saquon Barkley falls to you, I mean, pretty much just take him regardless of who you took in the first round, what your plan was, whatever. There's too much upside in him uh, appearing to be healthy again. I know there might be some injury concern and all, but... Um, he's kind of a beast and hey look at that we're just going to take kind of beasts all up and down this roster i think it might be you know a uh, tyree kill of of old in this offense with this quarterback but um i like him so there we had a choice between aj dillon david montgomery josh jacobs J.K. Dobbins. I would rank them. I believe I have um, A.J. maybe behind all of these guys in my rankings. Sorry, J.K. Dobbins was not included in that. That's better. Yes, he was. J.K. Josh Jacobs, not David Montgomery. I was going to say, David Montgomery definitely have higher. Um, He's like the safest one. Josh Jacobs is probably your second safest, and J.K. Dobbins is your upside. But it's not like A.J. Dillon doesn't have that upside, especially in case of an injury. And uh, Josh Jacobs isn't that safe because of injury concern. And same with J.K. Dobbins' injury concern. So I sometimes go down um, depending on how I'm feeling for A.J. Dillon over them anyways. Do we want a quarterback? No. No need to... Take a quarterback in the fifth round. There are wide receivers I personally would take over Mike Williams. We should we should not take a running back. We're gonna take look at this. And you can still come back around. You get a Rashad Penny. You could get a Tony Pollard, Damian Pierce, Melvin Gordon. Um, let's see. Damian Pierce, going to depend your league now. But uh, the news today, the noise today, may cool things down a little bit. So, okay, you know what? I would take Rashad Penny, except for uh, we're already, like, running back strong. And I don't think he'll be the starter come week six, seven, at the very least. So, we will not do that. I really like the upside of Tony Pollard in that group of um, guys. You know, once again, I do have uh, Damian Pierce ranked quite a bit higher, but I'm um, a I, I, better offense, better quarterback, uh, might get a lot of receptions, something that Damian Pierce is definitely not going to be guaranteed. Uh, so, a little, little less risk with a Tony Pollard compared to a Damian Pierce. That's for sure. And you can get them later, normally, right now. And I think Daryl Henderson might be an, another nice addition. Yeah. 
So I think Henderson will have a, uh, as long as he's healthy, have a spot in this offense. I've thought that since March. Um, I think that is going to be a three-headed uh, running back by committee there with the rookie Kier- Kyron, uh, with the rookie running back that they drafted, Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson. I think they like Daryl Henderson in a role on the offense and Cam Akers as the um, first down, second down guy with putting uh, their backup in maybe like every third drive or something like that to help keep Cam fresh, maybe use the hot hand approach even there. And then Daryl Henderson, like I said, a bit of a formation guy as well as like the two minute guy which uh, you'd be surprised how many points two-minute guys can get just in those two minutes when they get those two-minute drives. And sometimes those two-minute drives start at three and a half minutes, four minutes, and some games depending on field position and whatnot. Or, or even um, if they're behind in the fourth quarter, sometimes they can just start to kind of go into a bit of a, a, a hurry offense, in which case uh, a team like this might – put Daryl Henderson out there more if they're behind in many games. Something to think about. Let's just see what this ends up looking like if we were to go Dallas here. And then we follow that up with Trey Lance. Okay, I'm a happy boy. So, maybe we get Jahan Dotson around there. Um, You've made it to this point in the video, so here's my gift to you. Jahan Dotson could be this year's Justin Jefferson point oh as in uh, maybe not Justin Jefferson his rookie season quite but um, ish ish he's uh, here here's the reasoning so why I liked Justin Jefferson his rookie season he's in a system who really only has two wide receivers that do something and there was a vacant wide receiver spot just waiting to be filled for him. And uh, beginning to age, other wide receiver on the other end who is going to take attention away from the rookie who nobody's going to be too concerned about. Bada bing, bada boom. And it's a run first offense, so all of those types of things can help just take a little bit of pressure off of that rookie wide receiver. Washington going to be a similar situation just uh you know it's freaking uh a barely running back antonio gibson instead of delvin cook for the rushing game um uh, not as successful rushing game to begin with as the vikings have it's um terry mclaurin and not adam thielen <laughs> so i uh, definitely some differences but he's coming in to the number two spot on an offense who has a lot of available production and work that could be filled in there. Better quarterback than they had previously last year. Um, A nice situation for Jahan Dotson. And he is actually, he was drafted a few spots higher as far as draft value. um, Factoring that in, he's drafted a little bit higher than Justin Jefferson was. So uh, he has that pedigree sitting there too on him, technically on his side. Although, I did not really care for Jahan Dotson as a draft prospect this year. It feels a bit like a one-trick pony to me, but I could be so wrong on that. And the Washington Redskins definitely wouldn't agree with me. And, um, you know, they kind of do this for a living. So, uh, But I did love Justin Jefferson more than Jahan Dotson. So there's also that concern, but I, he, he could be something. Okay, I'm planning right now on going two wide receiver, two quarterback. I have Justin Fields in a separate tier from Trevor Lawrence. Um, and I don't love it. But the only reason I did not change it was uh, this last set of preseason games. Not like Trevor Lawrence looked bad, but Justin Fields looked like I was hoping he would look, I guess, in this preseason. So um, faith is back in the projections on that one and in the possibility. It's really just the amount of running that he almost certainly will have to do based on not having a great offensive line. 
he had a poor offensive line last year, and this offensive line should be marginally better, maybe, not worse than their offensive line was last year. And he has, uh, I think, more depth at the wide receiver position, at least, behind Darnell Mooney. And he's not a rookie anymore. If he does what he did for once he got his feet under him, once he uh, and and he doesn't have Matt Nagy as a coach anymore. But if he does what he did once he started to thrive again, um, that's kind of where the edge came in over Trevor Lawrence. And Tua for me is just that uh, he showed more last year than them. So if we're between New Orleans, the Broncos, and you don't love the Green Bay Packers defense like I do, um, I think the Miami Dolphins are a good defense. I don't think they have a good starting schedule. These two both have schedules that I like to begin the season, and I do like New Orleans more than uh, Denver there. All right, so here is what we got. We did not push our tight end and quarterback too far like that initial draft that I did where I just kind of kept pushing them to see how much we could push them back and other than that we um I would say just try, kind of drafted for value throughout here looks nice I um around this spot of the draft I'm liking as we've gone back a little bit further too especially if somebody like Derrick Henry were to drop to you at the sixth spot of the draft I'm liking uh, a s- bit of a strong running back early and then through the end of the dead zone, maybe getting one or two and grabbing one late, thinking that's kind of a nice strategy. Sorry if you're a two quarterback, two tight end guy. I guess I got a fair amount of that in today. Probably did not in the last video. Um, I'm just a pretty strong believer that uh, one quarterback and one tight end will do it because there's going to be other tight ends that will uh, do just as good as your teammates' backup tight ends that they have on their rosters. And the same can be said for the quarterbacks, even in a league like mine where uh, they pretty much all get taken up. Still, between the 12 remaining, there's a few good choices. Just play the matchup. Yeah, you should be able to get by as long as you don't have a long-term injury. Then there can be con- some concern if your teammates are stingy with holding onto the quarterback. So know your league. Um, I would say that is the one thing in my league I could probably do in my drafts would be to draft two quarterbacks. So not the worst thing in the world. So this league we have Trey Lance. We matched him up with Justin Fields because we are just a little bit concerned about um, Trey Lance. And the same could be said about Justin Fields. So we have two guys with a lot of upside who could both suck. So that is a really good uh, combination at your quarterbacks. Two great pairings there. It's like pickling is something that you hate. It turns into something good. And then you have Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley and A.J. Dillon, followed up by Tony Pollard, Daryl Henderson Jr., Zamir White. Uh, that just Given where I got them, I feel like they were all just nice values that kind of fell in this draft. And then Tyreek Hill, Mike Williams... A lot of upside to this roster in general. Marquise Brown, Rashad Bateman to just tamper that upside a tiny bit. A tiny bit. Maybe not. Um, but bring some known stability in there. And then Jahan Dotson. We want some more upside there at the wide receiver. Um, yeah. That is all that we'll do today. I've got plenty to edit here. So I will try to edit it out nicely down for you. Um, please do the YouTube things. You know what they are. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, do them all. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you very much. Good luck with your drafts. I'll have seven through nine coming soon. I will be taking a day or two off to get a desk and chair to work with instead of my current setup. Um, so I want to do that before, uh, this, um, before the season starts here. So trying to get these videos, uh, recorded and finished with, but I may not get to, it depends, seven, eight, nine and nine, 10, 10, 11, 12 might be a bit before I get to them. I just cut all this out.